Okay, we're back. We're going to show that um, we're going to prove theorem 5.4.1. Before we prove that each number n, each positive integer n, does have a binary representation, and now we'd like to show that it's unique. So let's um, let's get some space here. We're going to show it's unique, and this is not an induction proof. But what we can do. Let's do a proof by contradiction. Um, suppose that n has two binary representations. Um, that means that, that n is going to equal cr times 2 to the r plus c r minus 1 times 2 to the r minus 1 plus all the way down to c 2 times 2 squared plus c 1 times 2 to the 1 plus c 0 and n has another binary representation let's call it d s times 2 to the s r and s might be different plus d s minus 1 times 2 to the s minus 1 plus all the way down to d2 times 2 squared plus d1 times 2 to the 1 plus d0. So here's two binary, two binary representations. And <clears throat> we have to come up with a contradiction. Well, first, well, first um, um, I want to make um, some observations. Um, um, we can assume that R is bigger than S. Okay. Why is that? Well, first, um, either R is bigger than S, or R is equal to the S, or R is less than S. Um, these are the three things that could happen. And if R is less than S, what we could do is we could just rename R and S. We would call R the new S, and we'd call S the new R, and then switching them, we'd have R's bigger than S. So if this is the situation, an argument that assumes that R is bigger than S would also handle the situation that R is less than S, because we could just call them different names. But if R and S are equal, that means that, well, CR is the leading coefficient, the leading term of n with this representation, and DS is the leading term here. Those are the same. We could just cancel these two terms, and we'd have two smaller binary representations of a smaller number. So n would not be the smallest positive integer with two binary representations. So um, R equals S. We could only consider the smallest. If R equals S, we can get rid of these two terms and have a smaller example of N that has two binary representations. So here's our running observation that R is greater than S. And with this, what I want to show you is that on the one hand, on the one hand, with this, this first representation, R is bigger than S over here. This means that N is bigger than or maybe equal to 2 to the R. Um, to get that, we know that, that this coefficient is 1. So 1 times 2 to the R is here. And if we just throw away all of these other terms, then n would, um, we'd, we'd be getting a smaller number. So n is bigger than this, because n is this term plus possibly more terms. These might all be 0. So n could equal 2 to the r, but it's at least that big. And now, over here, over here, what I could do is um, each of these terms ds, ds minus 1, um, dj is either a 1 or a 0. 
those are the two values of the binary digits or bits. By the way, um, a binary digit is called a bit. There's the B, there's the um, IT that was coined about a hundred years ago, binary digits. So with this, I can make this number bigger by changing each of the bits up to one. So that means that N is less than or equal to two to the S plus two to the S minus one plus two to the S minus two all the way down to two squared plus two, two to the one plus one. Uh, because here I'm assuming that um, if all of the coefficients are one, then I'd increase the number and that would be at least as big as n. Uh, but over here, what I have is, is a sum of a geometric uh, sequence. Do you see that? Uh, it's easier to see the other way. We start with one, multiply it by two, multiply it by two. The common ratio is two. If we go in this way, the first term is two to the s and the common ratio is one half. But the sum is actually equal to two to the s plus one minus one. That's what the sum of a geometric sequence formula gives us in the case, in this particular case. So that means that n is less than or equal to 2 to the s plus 1 minus 1. And that means that n is strictly less than 2 to the s plus 1. So I have these two pieces of information that n is at least as big as 2 to the r, but n is strictly less than 2 to the s plus 1. And note that r is bigger than s, so that means that um, n, which is bigger than or equal to 2 to the r, is actually bigger than 2 to the s. Um, but n is, now let's scratch that. Um, r is bigger than s, so that means that r is bigger than or equal to s plus 1. So 2 to the r is bigger than or equal to 2 to the s plus 1. So that means that n, um, n is bigger than 2 to the r. 2 to the r is at least as big as 2 to the um, s plus 1, but that is bigger than n if we turn this around. And that means that this number n is bigger than itself. We have a number that is bigger than itself, and that can't possibly happen. That's a contradiction. Um, so we've concluded uniqueness. We suppose that, that there's an integer that has a non-unique binary representation and we derived a contradiction. That means that that assumption um, led to a contradiction. Um, it must always be the case that every positive integer does have a unique representation. Okay, let's look. Oh.